Today's video is taken from an Ask the Instructor email submission asking about the use of toolpath control slash containment in the 3D milling operations and how that differs from some of the toolpath controls in 2D operations. Uh, so one of the first lines of the email here is talking about uh, 2D compensation where compensating left left right equates a G-code that turns uh, the control into, uh, allows the operator to do some um, machining for tight tolerances. Let me just address that first, I guess. Um, so le left and right doesn't really change, the, um, it changes the output of G-code, but it's not this this one here is not affecting your ability to change anything at the machine control. So whether I output this as left or right, um, basically the G code you get from this file is the G code you're going to get on the machine, and it's going to cut what it's going to cut. As far as being able to compensate with G41 and G42, which you get into talking about a little bit later, uh, that's when you get into this compensation type up top here. So if it's outputting as computer, um, there's no G41 or G42. Same with off, has no G41 or G42. Control aware and reverse aware all output G41 or 42 and then uh, handle it in, in specific ways. Uh, we do have a video out there, I think it's in the blog, about compensation types and maybe have a look at that and that should clear up any issues or, or confusions about the use of cutter compensation in the 2D world. So. 3D stuff is what we're talking about here, though. Um, so I guess to get, explain this right from the get-go, as far as compensating in a 3D tool motion the same way that uh, maybe you're used to seeing with G41, G42, Mastercam can output that code. Um, it comes down to whether or not your control can actually handle that type of code. Most controls cannot uh, do 3D compensation. Uh, and for 3D compensation, there's a bunch of other weird stuff that the post has to be able to do. Uh, so some posts are not even able, are not currently set up by default to output that type of code, but I don't think that's even still the question that we're getting to talking about here right now. Uh, so 3D compensation, kind of like adjusting your offset to cut the part bigger or smaller in the 2D world, is possible in 3D, but the settings that you're talking about are, are not how you control that. So these settings in here, these would, would not affect the output of 3D compensation um, for a code. That would come in probably in a miscellaneous value. If your post was capable of it, you would turn on one of these values and it would output um, the vector information for the 3D compensation. But back to this stuff here and what this stuff is actually doing. We'll try and explain that a little bit. Okay, so uh, I'm in a raster toolpath, which is basically back and forth um, type of 3D toolpath. And I'm just going to leave all these boundaries turned off. Nothing selected here. Um, set the tooltip, set to center, and, and we'll see what we get. I guess it would help if I picked some geometry for this actual toolpath to cut here. So let's, uh, let's grab that face and try again here. Let me make sure I get a ball mill in here too. I think I skipped over. Oh, we got a ball mill. We should be good. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. So here's our default raster tool path. Selected nothing for boundary. Set the tool tip. Set the center. So if I change any of these right now, let's go inside and see if we get a difference. Uh, no difference. So the reason why there's no difference right now is because I don't have anything selected for my boundary. Okay, so I put that back to center, and I'm going to select a boundary this time. So I've made some wireframe geometry here earlier. I've selected this now as my boundary. So basically what I'm saying is uh, this toolpath is going to be bounded by this geometry I just made. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be any shape you can draw. It doesn't As long as it's wireframe is the only really uh, key factor there. And I'm still going to leave these at default, and let's check uh, out the difference. So you can see now that toolpath is actually uh, limited to the boundary that I just drew, or it's contained by it. Uh, so as far as compensating to inside, outside, and center, let's go, uh, sorry, let's go inside first. 
I'll set this to inside. I've left this box checked. It's checked by default. The distance is zero, but notice this says include the tool radius, and it's uh, picking up the radius as three eighths, which is half of the cutter I'm using. The cutter I'm using is three quarters. So I reload that. Notice the tool path is now inside this shape. And if we wanted to confirm, um, let me just do an offset chain here. Let's offset it in that same 3 8 distance. And you can see that even though the toolpath is coming outside, that's a transition motion. The straight toolpath itself is being contained inside that shape. Uh, well, 3 8 of an inch inside of the shape I've selected, which is basically what I've told it to do here. Um, so we can go a little bit more. So fifth, sorry, not half inch, 50 thou more than the radius, which is going to keep this slightly more inside of this offset. And flip side, we can go outside with this. Let's go back to zero here. Which now, the boundary we've selected, we're telling the toolpath it's allowed to go outside of it by the radius of the tool. Okay, so it's, it's compensating. Um, I can see how this is getting confusion compensating with, with offsetting in the control, but this is just all related to the toolpath creation, um, which does relate to the output, outputted, outputted, <laughs> the created G code, um, but it's not giving you the ability to alter that G code at the machine, or not alter the G code, but affect the motion of that G code at the, at the machine. So tool contact point, let's have a look at this. So tool contact point is not going to show up good on this part. Because it's a flat part, when we, talk, we start talking about the tool contact point, because the part is flat, um, the tip of the tool is always going to be contacting the surface. So this, this is not going to be a great example on a flat part. And I've got a round part made up over here that should show this a little bit better. So let's reselect some geometry here. Uh, we'll have to unselect the other guy first. And then let's grab this face here. Okay. So right now let's just do uh, contact points. Let's turn this off and see what we get. Okay, so no containment's turned on. The tool is just basically going to cut whatever it can reach. Um, obviously, it gets to a point where uh, it can't go any further down because it just can't go underneath the part. Let's get about to the halfway point here, and we should be able to see somewhat good. So we have no containment on right now, so it's allowed to cut whatever it can reach, but it's, it's getting to the point that it can't reach, obviously, around the part, so the toolpath is actually stopping at the tangent point between those two, two balls. So like I said, in here I said we could see this better with tool tip versus contact point. Uh, so by default, I think the operations will come in with tool tip. So let's try tool tip first with a containment boundary, which I'm going to grab. Uh, let's go with this inner circle here which if we look from the top, is going to be smaller than the actual part. So our toolpath is being contained by that circle. And let's go through a back plot here. About the middle so we can get a good side view of it. Okay. So if you were to take the toolpath and kind of bring it straight up, you can see I'm a little bit skewed, but the, basically the, the tip of the tool is on that selected boundary. So tool tip, center of the selected boundary. If we do contact point now, so now what we're saying is, if we were to project this circle down onto this face, let's go again about to the halfway point,
So it might not be exactly at the midpoint of this toolpath, but in a nutshell, if you were to take this again and extend it straight down or project it onto this surface, you can see the contact point of the tool is what's being limited to the selected boundary. So it, the tool itself, that's the portion of the tool that's contacting the surface, can't it go outside of this boundary. So again, we can extend, you know, take it one step further. Now we can say, is that contact portion allowed to go outside the boundary, inside the boundary? Do we want to include the tool radius or just type in an amount? So if you're doing tool contact point, probably what you would do is you would turn radius off and maybe then you would uh, just give it an extra value uh, to keep a certain portion of the tool either inside or outside. But that's basically what those parameters are doing. It's just a, a way to contain the tool path or the created tool path. Um, it's in conjunction with, so in these 3D tool paths, basically things that you want to be able to do is you want to limit areas or locations of where your tool path is taking place. And you can do it a couple different ways. You can do it with uh, geometry that you select as far as faces. You can do it with um, containment boundaries. And you can do it with uh, Z depths. And you can do it with angle limits. So there's four different ways that you can limit where the tool path is actually going to happen. And in, in a nutshell, that's what this containment boundary is doing. So it's allowing you to, to limit a tool path to a specific area of the part, um, even though you've had to select more geometry. So in this, I've only got one face, so I have to select this entire face. So if I only wanted to machine this area, I have to make a containment boundary to keep my tool path in that area. Okay, so it might have been a little bit long-winded, but I think we've covered this containment boundary in depth. Um, if there is any other questions, uh, let me know, and we'll try and clear those up as well.